were with me when um when I had to stop being in denial about the progression of my lymphedema. I remember you were like, you know, this is lymphedema, right? And I was like, no, I think I twisted my knee. And you were like, you know, it's lymphedema. And I was like, I don't want to admit it. <laughs> um, when my lymphedema progressed from my, originally from my left leg and then to my abdomen and then to my right leg. Um, now, um, what I'm dealing with, like currently, as as we're speaking right now, is I've been having kind of a flare up in my abdomen, and the abdomen is a really tricky place with lymphedema because it's hard to put compression on, it's hard to do even manual lymphatic drainage because you you've got organs and things that wiggle around in there, so it's really um, it's been a challenge. And um, again, I've been, you know, really in denial about this. And I finally realized because in the mornings, you know, I get up, I do my chi machine, I do my massage, I put my garment on, I put my jeans on. And I'm like, I don't know what I was upset about yesterday. I'm doing good. And by noon, I can't button my jeans. And I'm like, oh, crap. Like, I, I, I can't keep denying that this is like, so I am right now in the process of figuring out what I'm going to do to uh, get on top of this, um, you know, because I've been having so much swelling and then pain um, related to the abdomen area, which, you know, years ago I had that and I kind of got it under control and we just kind of life as usual, you know, as we do with lymphedema, we overcome our immediate issue and we just keep going. So do you have any tips or tricks for anybody that's having that issue right now? You know what? I would love to kind of take a little bit of a deep dive in that, not specifically towards like your individual case, but I'd love to talk more about like, cause this is kind of a part of lymphedema awareness that we don't talk that much about there's the initial lymphedema awareness where we're giving risk reduction practices to someone to help, you know, keep them in lymphedema stage zero and not going to lymphedema stage one. But I think we don't talk as much about how to give our clients like the stress regulation and self-efficacy to not, um, to not like... I hate to say like run away to not like push things under the rug until like the boogie monster is actually coming out of the closet. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have a support system, um, with your family, you have a good, uh, self-care practices. Um, what did you, what did you, what was the emotions? And, and that's it. You know, I, I do know that emotions have a lot to do with, you know, with, with everything. Like, um, so I would say, um, you know, I got sick back in October. Um, and that's when this all started because I kind of got out of my everyday routine. I got out of my self-care routine. I even ate things that I haven't eaten for 10 years because I felt sick and I didn't want to be good. Um, and then I was like, okay, um, this is like, I, I deserve this. I was bad. You know, you, you, you know, because I think mm -hmm. we're taught that food is bad, right? Like if we eat the wrong thing, we're bad. So this is my punishment for like eating things that were salty and processed and things that I just don't put in my body. So I'm mm -hmm. like, well, you did this to yourself, Peggy, this is your fault. You're, you're going to have to get over this. So, you know, so I start eating clean and doing all my, you know, things that I'm supposed to. And I'm like, I am not seeing the snapback <laughs> like I normally do. And then I feel like, you know, oh my gosh, I've just spun myself into this terrible thing and like all this guilt on mm -hmm. eating junk food for a week, seriously, mm -hmm. like eating junk food for a week after, you know, I eat pretty clean all the time, but this one week. So I feel like so much guilt and self like, oh my God, you know, you did this to yourself. And then mm -hmm. I was like, you know, screw that. <laughs> I eat better than most people that I know that, you know, and so, you know, then I was like really trying to identify why I'm feeling so much guilt and, and I am a woman of a certain age. So I've got all these hormones going crazy and cortisol and all the other stress hormones that are just, you know, completely out of, out of whack. So I'm like, all right, 
just, I don't care. This is my body. I love my body because even though my body may not be the shape and the size that I would prefer it to be, it's still keeping me walking on this earth. Like it's mm -hmm. awesome. It keeps doing all these workarounds, right? Like mm -hmm. it's blocked here. So I'm going to fix this here. And so I really try to get myself in a headspace of being amazed by my body and telling my body, thank you. But it's tough when your jeans don't fit. So let's do something that we've done before, because I think this is a really great time for it. Feeling this, um, cause we're coming up against some big emotions like guilt, shame, um, trying to, to reorient ourselves. So we can start just a brief mindfulness practice so we can have our hands. You see, whenever I hear someone's mm -hmm. story, my hand goes to my heart. Um, so we can just take a moment here and take a deep breath. You can exhale and then inhale. And then just being with our big feelings right now. And we can say to ourselves, you know what? Struggling with this lymphedema, struggling with this chronic illness, it's, it, it, it has some big feelings. It has a big impact in our life. And we can say to ourselves, you know what? We're, we're not alone in this. It, sometimes it feels like we're alone, but people all over the world are struggling with their lymphedema progressing as well. And then there's two options. If you can say some kind words to yourself, go ahead and say some kind words to yourself. And if you find that difficult, um, think of a friend or a loved one, someone that really has your back. And think of the words that they would whisper in your ear. You're having a tough time right now. You're, you deserve health, you deserve wellness, whatever words that you think they would tell you or words that you can tell yourself. And then we'll just take one last breath. And then wiggle your fingers and toes. How did that feel? That felt so good. I'm trying not to like cry on camera. Um, but yeah, it, and, and I think that's such a good reminder for, for everyone. That is something that I've been saying for years is you are not alone, but sometimes I need to hear that I'm not alone. Yeah. Cause this is something all, a lot, you know, the majority of people will deal mm -hmm. with at some point, they'll have a progression of the lymphedema and, um, it's important not to turn away from it. It's important to reach out to our support system. I've been do, looking into the research on lymphedema awareness and that this self-blame and guilt is a part of what can stop people from kind of seeking help and getting the tools that they need because so many times for when the lymphedema first comes and when it progresses, it's, it's like the swelling comes out of nowhere and the person mm -hmm. blames themselves. And it's so many other, this is a disease. Um, this is not something that's your fault. And for a lot of people, when someone, you know, like when a kid gets a, the flu, we don't blame them. Like, why did you get the flu? We take care of them. Mm -hmm. But so often, you know, we blame ourselves and, and, there's one thing to see where it came from to give, and that's a clue as to how we can um, help ourselves, but it's another thing to go into the circle of blame and shame. And that doesn't, and while you're in the circle of blame and shame, are you able to reach out to somebody or are you, you know, just focusing in and beating and, yourself up? And I think that's, that's so important because um, that's something 
I think a lot of us struggle with because we live in a society um, that shames fat. Fat is your fault. Fat in any shape or form and any, you could be the thinnest person with a big arm or a big leg, um, but yet you still um, feel shame towards it because you're not what society calls beautiful or perfect. Um, but really, I mean, we are kind of beautiful and perfect, right? Because our body's still kicking. Our body's still figuring out workarounds to keep us alive and, and going. Um, and clearly I've been struggling with this. So me saying these positive things is not like what's been going on in my head. Like in my head, I've been beating myself up. <laughs> yes. But also, I am aware enough to step back and say, okay, the thoughts in my head are just that, their thoughts. The truth is that I appreciate my body for what it is and because it is still keeping me here on earth. So yeah, thank you for that. Thank you You're for welcome. that.